the work we're doing now that my interest really started a long time ago. And it's that same interest that I think everyone has in natural history. Whether you're interested in butterflies or fossils or tropical fish or birding, for example, it's an attraction towards understanding nature, how it works, how it came to be. And some of this is, is aesthetic. It's appreciating what we would call you know, beauty in nature. And when I understood that there were deeper questions than just those at the surface, uh, I was, was clearly interested in understanding the machinery of how nature works, uh, how cells work, how genes work. The lab, over time, has had a really broad menu. And that has, we pursued fundamental questions about how development works, trying to figure out how complex structures are made, how the whole choreography of building a complex animal works, what's the communication that goes on between cells, what goes on within cells so that they do the right things at the right time. In the evolutionary arena, we've been interested in questions that are as broad as the origin of the animal kingdom to as narrow as how two different fruit flies develop some minor appearance, uh, uh, difference in appearance between them. And we pursued these questions at different times because different questions were ripe for the plucking at different times. We could ask some of these global questions at certain moments and we could get into some of the deep details at entirely different periods of, uh, of the development of the science. So we've worked on so many different sorts of species, I couldn't name them all um, without leaving out a good number of them. We've worked on simple unicellular organisms, we've worked on strange animals we had to go to Australia to isolate, we've worked on butterflies, probably 20 or 30 species of fruit flies. Whatever species gave us a model for the big picture that we were trying to study. In the most practical aspects, uh, our medical lives are intertwined with evolution because we're in a constant arms race with the pathogens that affect us. So there's a continuing arms race we have with uh, pathogens that uh, has every, all the hallmarks of the evolutionary process. There's perhaps an even larger issue, one that's maybe not thought about as much. Because there's six billion of us, and we've had such a huge impact on the Earth's ecosystems, and we're so dependent upon the Earth's natural resources for our standard of living and our survival, uh, we have to consider our evolutionary impact on the rest of the globe. And while there's a lot of discussion about that, I think in, in hard figures, in the hard reality of that is not well understood. For example, our influence on the population of fish in the oceans. Industrialized fishing has had profound effects on fish populations catastrophically wiping out some of them, turning ecosystems upside down, and really raising the possibility that uh, many fisheries are not going to be sustainable long into the future. Uh, some are perhaps even beyond repair at the moment. And so uh, that's just a small slice of our sort of influence, but influence that really out of our own self-interest we have to come to appreciate. That you know, when we drag a fishing trawler along the ocean bottom, that net even the holes, the size of the holes in that net are a form of natural selection. What animals get taken up in it, what animals get left behind, and what the structure is of the ecosystem that's left on a scrubbed ocean floor. And this is, has profound influences on human survival and, our, and standard of living around the world. So outside of the lab, one of the things I enjoy most is traveling with my family, particularly to far off places that are full of really neat either living organisms or fossils. So coral reefs, jungles, deserts, the American West in particular, and we spend a lot of time seeking out glimpses of the wildlife or digging for fossils or cracking rocks or wading around in shallow water, and it's to get that visceral thrill of discovery, um, and I'm happy to say my kids share it, as I think most people do if they get that opportunity. I, I, I just hold out as Exhibit A that you know, if, if there's a dinosaur on exhibit, people flock to see it. We are fascinated with these sorts of creatures. So those are the kind of experiences I seek most. That and watching the Red Sox go for a title. <laughs>